Now in lesson number two, we're beginning the designing portion of the princess patchwork skirt. Now, in order to get to this point where you can begin designing with your skirt pattern, you have to have drawn your skirt blueprint. Now, again, for those of you who are my existing customers, you already know about your blueprint. It's basically your sloper. It's the pattern that fits you. For any of you who are new and joining us for the first time, you need to get to this point. That means testing your skirt pattern. So you're going to use the Surefoot Designs Master Pattern. You're going to measure yourself. You're going to draw off your skirt pattern. And how are you going to get directions for drawing off your skirt pattern? Well, inside the Surefoot Designs Dress Kit is a complete instruction book. And in the instruction book, there are all the steps for drawing off the bodice, the skirt, and the sleeves. And so here's the page where the skirts begin. Along with these directions, many of you also have our how-to DVD. Disc one is devoted to the dress kit. That means that you're going to see how to draw off the bodice, the skirt, and the sleeves all in a video format. I do encourage you to watch the video and follow along step by step and do exactly as I'm doing on the video and you'll end up with a blueprint that fits your body shape and size. Now, once you've got your blueprint completed, then you can go on, let me move that away, then you can go on with the designing portion. And so where we're going to look for this information is on page 29 of the dress kit instruction book and it's starting off talking about the straight skirt. Now one of the very first things it's going to do is suggest that you remove some of the waist ease that's on the skirt pattern. Let me explain why. When this skirt is completed and when it's joined together to the bodice to make a dress with a waistline seam, there is one inch of ease at the waistline. So if I was to measure this section of the skirt pattern, or well, the waistline of the skirt pattern, let me put it that way, minus the dart, and that's on the skirt front and the skirt back, when it's completely finished being measured, you're going to see that that ends up being one inch larger than your waist, because that's the amount of ease that is allowed in the test dress. And I know that looks like a basic boring dress, and I couldn't agree with you more, it is. But that's your test dress, your test sloper. You're just making sure that you like the fit of it. But it does have one inch of ease at that waistline. So now we need to remove some of that ease because typically when a waistband is put on a skirt, you only ever want about, oh, anywhere from a quarter to a maximum of a half an inch of ease on the waistline because that allows for you to tuck in the blouse or a sweater at the top of your skirt. So one of the first things we're going to do is remove some of the ease that's on the waistline. Now, whenever you are designing a new pattern, you want to leave your blueprint the way it is. So let's take a look at the notations that I've put on here. Number one, it's my skirt front and it is the blueprint. Now this happens to be the blueprint for the mannequin so that when the skirt is completed we can put your skirt on it and take a look at it. And the center front is also labeled. I've got the straight of grain in place and you know another really good thing to put on your pattern is the date that you did this. I know I've got customers that date back 20 and 30 years with Surefit Designs and I can assure you their bodies have changed over the years. They always can go back and say, what was my, what was the date I did it? And you might often want to write down your measurements as well. And what were my measurements? Because in a year or two, if your weight shifts and changes more than about five to 10 pounds, you'll likely want to redo your body blueprint, or in this case, your skirt blueprint. So those are the labels. You'll also see that I've put on the required 5 8 inch seam allowance and I have the 2 inch hem allowance at the bottom of the skirt. 
Now, once you've got your blueprint done, you don't want to be cutting this up because then for every new design, you'd have to draw off your body blueprint again. And you don't want to do that. You want to make this as quick and simple as it really is to do this. So preserve your finished blueprint. Then what you'll do is take a piece of tracing vellum and when you want to make a new design, you're simply going to lay vellum over top and start drawing off a composite pattern or a new pattern. And this is where uh, the designing aspect will come in. So all I've done is tape down the vellum over top because I don't want any shifting to occur. And then I'll start drawing. Now I've drawn some light pencil lines in here for myself, just to remind myself of all the little pieces that I need to show you. But I do want to draw this all off in my bright red. Where did I put it? And that's where no mistakes can come in for me. Otherwise, you're going to see them. But be that as it may, you are going to be drawing in pencil and following along as I do this. So I need to put my little half eyes on so I can see what I've done here. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the first dominant lines that you're going to draw are your straight of grain and the center front. So I will just use the line drafter and I'm going to draw it exactly the same length as the grain line on the master pattern so that if my vellum shifts for any reason, I can realign it very quickly. And then I'm going to draw in the center front. And this skirt, let me pull up the illustration again. This skirt, I'm going to make it about one inch shorter than my blueprint. Here's another example of the gourd skirt. I'm going to make it about one inch shorter than my actual blueprint because on the bottom, if you want to, you can put a contrasting piece of fabric at the bottom, again, depending on your choice. If you don't want a contrasting piece of fabric, then just leave it the regular hem length. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten this skirt by approximately one inch. So there's my regular hemline. I'm going to come up one inch and mark that. And then I can draw the center front marking or the center front line. And I will also label that as center front. Now the center front of this skirt is going to be on the fold of the fabric so I'll also mark that as the place on the fold, like that. Now, I'm going to draw the rest of the pattern coming along here. Let's see, what do I want to do right now? I'll draw the waist edge at the top. I'm using the designing stylus. And remember, remember, I almost forgot this. On page 29, we need to take the waist edge in one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to do that right here. If I measure in, I've got my ruler right here, and there's my one eighth inch marking right there. So now when I connect the waist point or the side waist edge here with the side of the dart, it will look like that because I've gotten rid of about an eighth of an inch. And you might ask me why an eighth of an inch? Because an eighth of an inch over four seam allowances, you've got two side seams, the right and the left, and if you multiply an eighth of an inch by four, it's taking away one half inch. And that's likely enough to start with. Then you can try your skirt on during the sewing process, and if you want to nip off a little bit more, because you don't want even that much ease in your waistline, you can certainly do it. Okay, then I'm going to blend that new waist point down into the hip line, utilizing again the hip curvature that's on the designing stylus. I just want to make sure that doesn't get too wide there. And then I can take the straight edge either, oops, see now I just shifted my vellum. So let me get that line back up again. 
There we go. I was too vigorous with uh, the little bit of movement that I did on the tracing vellum. And now I'm going to draw the side seam. And that also ended up, actually I said an inch, but I really meant about an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to come up about an inch and a quarter from the blueprint. And of course I stopped this at an inch and a quarter. Thank goodness for my little pencil markings because they showed me where to stop. So that's my new hem level. And let me move some of those out of the way so that I can draw this. And now let's take a look at how to start this princess line. So it's going to come out of the dart structure. And this dart is going to create the shaping to go over top of your hip line. So what I want to do is take a design line straight down from the tip of the dart. And I'm going to make sure with my line drafter that this is totally parallel. I don't want anything shifting on me. I want this line out of the tip of the dart to come straight down from the tip of the dart. So it's going to come like this into the hem level. Okay. Now, the reason that I didn't draw it up any higher is because now I want to draw on either side of that dart because that's going to be my new stitching line. And let's see, turn the designing stylus this way. Now you can see how sharp of a point that dart tip comes in to my, my design line. I, I don't want that sharp tip. So I'm using the curved edge on the designing stylus. And now I'm just going to take that shape or design line up the side of the dart, utilizing the curved edge on the stylus. And I'm just going to flop the stylus over and I'm going to use that same shape on the other side of the dart. And what that does is it gives me a really smooth transition going into this princess seam or a design line seam, however you want to call it. Now, ultimately, I am going to be cutting these two pieces apart, but I will be sewing them back together. So I want to match them, and the best way to match them is to put in matching notches. So I'm going to put one in about three quarters of the way down the skirt, and I'm going to put another matching notch up at the top in that dart shape area. So when I draw off my side front panel and my center front panel, these will actually become matching notches. Oftentimes, I get ladies saying, Glenda, you never talk about notches. Well, I do when I need to. You know, after years and years of sewing, you usually can sew straight seams together without a matching notch. But in this case, I want my pieces to sew together in the correct position, so that's why I've put in matching notches here. Now the other thing that I need to put in on the side front panel is I need to put in a straight of grain marking because once I have these two sections separated, I need to know the grain line in order to put it on the fabric correctly. So again, come in my handy line drafter. I'm just going to line up one of the marks on the line drafting drafter with the grain line marking or the, with the design line marking that I'd already drawn, then I'm going to come out approximately two inches and draw a new grain line. So that now I've got a grain line on both sections. Okay? And then there's one other thing that I want to draw on here before I start actually drawing the segments. And again, if you're doing this in pencil, it's not going to be anywhere near as obvious as what's happening here with my, my red marker. But on my skirt, I said that we would put a little pocket. So let's take a look at this again. And I'm going to use the contrasting fabric and put it on that pocket. So I'm going to do an angled opening at the top 
and then the bottom of the pocket will be perpendicular to the design line. So let's draw the bottom of the pocket. And you know what I did? I came down on the, where's my other little ruler right here? First of all, I'm going to back up a bit and I'm going to say, let's design the top of the pocket. And so I said on the side of my body, I want to come down approximately three inches. And from the top of the skirt pattern, I'm going to come down about one inch. And then I said, okay, that's going to be the shape of the pocket opening for my hand to go in. And then from there, I said, how deep do I want that to be? And I've got that at four inches deep on the side seam. So the pocket would be shaped like this. Okay, and now this would be marked as side front. And this, of course, is your center front panel. Now, because these are going to be two separate pattern pieces, anytime you cut a design line in the interior of a pattern, I think you all know what you need to add, and that's seam allowances. So I could, in fact, just cut this right apart and then add another piece of tracing vellum behind there and then draw my seam allowances on, or I could lay vellum over top of this and draw all the pieces separately, putting on the seam allowances as I go. And so that's actually how I'm going to do the next process, is to bring up more vellum and start copying this pattern piece. The other thing that I'm going to do, when we have a little bit of break in the video here, is I'm going to remove my blueprint from underneath so that now we don't have those conflicting lines, excuse me, so now that we don't have those conflicting lines interrupting our viewpoint as I continue the drawing process. Now we're going to begin drawing these pieces separately so that we can add on all the required seam allowances and any other notations like notches and not have to add in tape strips of tracing vellum. And you can see that I've removed the body blueprint from underneath because I didn't want it conflicting in the viewpoint. And I also wanted to point out to you that on page 31 of the dress book, up at the top, it talks about the gourd skirt. Remember I told you that these princess seams coming out of a dart are often called the gourd skirt, and so that's where you're going to be able to follow along with the information that I'm presenting to you right now. So we got this layout done first of all, or the organization of your design, shall I say. Now you want to take a piece of tracing vellum and you're going to lay it on top of what you've just previously drawn and I'm going to again tape this down because I have my little pencil markings to keep me on target and now I can start finishing off the design for you and you'll see how this is so much easier so you just cut yourself a strip of vellum lay it over top and then begin your designing and I think this time I will draw this in green. So again, giving you a slightly different color to take a look at how it's all coming together. So the first thing always is the straight of grain marking. And then I'm going to draw the center front. Okay, and then Let's see here, I'm going to begin this long straight line right here. But remember, I don't want to take it all the way up to the waistline because I'm going to curve in to the dart. And so I need the designing stylus. And we'll repeat the shape that I previously drew. I took that green line up just a little bit further than I really wanted to because you can see that I'm trying to get a nice smooth stitching line coming down into that design line. Then there's this little section of the waistline right here and I've got this little section of the 
hem or the bottom of the skirt. And now I need to mark this as center front and it is on the fold. And let's see, I'm going to also mark this as cut one on the fold. And I know I want to do this one out of black. So my center is going to be black in this project. Now, ask yourself, what's missing? Well, it's all the seam allowances. And this is why it becomes so much easier now, just as I say, to take a separate piece of tracing vellum and draw on your seam allowances. Now, again, for those of you who are new to SureFit Designs, the designing stylus, this distance from the edge of the slot nearest the outside edge is exactly 5 eighths of an inch. But when I'm using the stylus in this direction, I, I can't get the, the slot over there. I can't turn it like that. So with this orientation, just take the designing stylus and slide it out until you can see where your stitching line would be and then put your seam allowance markings on here. Now typically I use a slot for the seam allowance and or a dashed line I should say because I am using the slot that's on the designing stylus. We'll bring this down here and because at the hem I currently plan on putting a contrasting piece of fabric at the bottom. I need to add seam allowance as well here. And let's just connect that like that and there we go. And one last straight line is the seam allowance up there. Now the last thing that's missing from this are the matching notches. So you'll recall I put a matching notch there. I'm going to extend it out like that and I put a matching notch right here and I'm going to extend it out like that so that now when I sew this piece together with this piece I'll be able to match up my notches and know that it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. Now we need to move on to drawing the side front. So I'm going to remove the center front pattern piece. I'll just set it over there for now. I'm going to take another piece of tracing vellum and I'm going to lay that over top of just the side front. I will tape it down so that nothing shifts. And now I can start drawing this side front. Again, I'm going to do this in green so that we've got a nice clear view of the differences and how it's all shaping up to be your gourd skirt or your princess panel skirt. Okay, there's the straight of grain. And then I'll draw this center line, the line that comes out of the tip of the dart, which is our princess line or our gore line. And I can also draw this side of the side seam with my line drafter too because it's a nice long straight line. But when I get up into the hip curve, I do need to stop and bring the designing stylus in. So we'll take this, find the hip curve, and again it's a repeat of your hip curvature shape. And now we can draw the waist edge. And remember I'm only drawing to this leg of the dart now, that side. And then let's see what was the curve I used on there. That's pretty good right like this. And there's the side of the dart that's coming up. So you can see that this dart is being eliminated, but the shaping that you require for your body is being transferred into the stitching line. Princess lines are just absolutely great for being able to shape the fabric to your body. That's one of the beauties of them. Now we're going to go on and draw the hem level and while I'm here, I'm going to add the seam allowance. 
and I should have slotted that, but we'll know what it is. And let me see, if I put the stylus this way, I will be able to use the slotted edge for the seam allowance. So I'm drawing through the slots provided on the designing stylus up as high as I can until the line starts to curve. And let's see what I've got here. I used this shape on the designing stylus, so now I'm just going to slide the stylus until I can see the stitching line, and now I'll add the seam allowance on the outside of the stylus edge. Okay, that looks good. We'll add the designing stylus at the waistline and add the seam allowances here. And the same thing on the side seam. Find the curve, slip the stylus out, and do the slots like I intended to do at the bottom. And now I can shift the stylus down and draw the slot on and the seam allowance on. And we'll have one more seam allowance marking right here. Okay. And one last thing, let's add the matching notches. So there was a matching notch in the interior of the skirt for that princess seam. There was another one up in the dart area. And now the other matching notch that I want to take off of here is a matching notch that was on the skirt blueprint and that's to help you sew that side seam together. There's one more pattern piece that I would like to draw while we're here and that is that pocket piece. Again, this pocket is totally optional for you but it's real easy to put it on and you can baste it on if you want to and then if you don't like it you can always remove it. But I'm going to go ahead and draw the pattern piece and I'm taping the vellum down. Again, here's the grain line. Now what I'm doing with this grain line to get the correct grain line on the pocket is just extending it up from the grain line on the side panel. So there it is. And now I can lay it on the fabric properly. And let's see here, we'll use the line drafter to draw this pocket piece. And uh, let's see, there's another straight line at the bottom. And you know something else about this line drafter I should mention to you is there's a pink slotted line on the inside of the outer edge and that's 5 8 inch seam allowances. So you can always just slide that over and draw on the seam allowance with the line drafter as well. As long as it's a straight line, it works. So I can do the same thing at the top edge. But the hip line and the interior of the princess seam has to be done with the designing stylus because it's a slightly curved line. So there's the stitching line and here is the seam allowance markings. And then over there I've got a double notch and I will definitely transfer it onto the pocket. That will help me line the pocket up properly. And let's see, I keep flipping the stylus back and forth. You'll do that too and you'll get used to it and realize that it's such a convenient tool to use. And then I'll slip it out to add the 5 8 inch seam allowance on the interior of that pocket. And then one other marking is the notch that's on the pocket in the interior of that princess seam line. So that creates the patch pocket. And I'm just going to remove this patch pocket real quickly now that it's all labeled and drawn because one other thing that I want to do is label the side front of the skirt and this is going to be side front 
panel and it is going to be cut too, but I am going to cut one out of the larger black print and one out of this smaller black and white kind of polka dot print. So um, that is the drawing of the front panels of the skirt pattern. And there is one more thing that I would like to show you and I'll do that in the next segment. You'll notice that I'm pulling you back to the skirt blueprint. There's one more thing that I would like to show you. When I designed the princess line, I took it right out of the dart structure that was on the skirt pattern. Now this dart structure is positioned based on the width of your apex to apex because we measure from bus point to bus part, divide that in half, and that's the waist fitting dart that goes in the front of your body. Well, when you put your skirt together with your bodice, you want this dart to follow along right underneath that waist fitting dart from your bodice. But let's say that you've got a really wide spread in your apex. That could and will position your dart off to the side, further over. And I'm just going to tape this down too because, again, I don't want it shifting on me. So if your dart for your skirt is closer to your, your hip level, and let's say that you don't want your princess seam or your gourd seam coming out of that particular dart structure. You want your princess seam coming out three or four inches away from the center front of the fabric, or center front of the pattern. So how do you move the dart? And that's what I wanted to show you in this little segment. Let's just say that you want the princess seam to be right here. So I'm just going to take this as a straight line going all the way up to the waistline. And notice that I'm doing it parallel to the center front. Okay. Now I need to get this dart structure over on top of that line. How do you do it? Let me use a different color here. We're going to bring a, a, the uh, take a ruler your line drafter works fine too, I just wanted to use a small one. Place something with a straight edge right at the tip of wherever your dart ends. And then put that dart tip on the line where you want your princess line. Then measure the width of the dart. Now this dart is finished one and a half inches wide. So I'm going to put half the dart on either side of that red line. So that's three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to put my little ruler there and I'm going to mark over three quarters of an inch right here. And for on the other side, I'm going to mark three quarters of an inch right there. So now I know that if I connect that new green dart tip to that three quarter inch marking and that dart tip to this three quarter inch marking, that now I've done is I've transferred this dart shape over on top of where I would like my shaping to come for the princess line. And of course this now will be totally eliminated. Here is your dart shape all in here. So then you just take your designing stylus and you would do the same thing. You would make your slight curve going into your princess line just as I did it before. And now you've got your dart transferred. So that's how easy it is to move a dart from any location over to where you want your seam line to be. So that completes the lesson on drawing off the panels for the skirt front. I'd like you to catch up with me and get all of your pattern pieces drawn for your skirt front. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, I invite you to join the Sherpa Designs community if you haven't already. And you can do that in three easy steps. Number one, make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is SureFit Designs. Secondly, make sure to sign up for our newsletter list. And you can do that by going to surefitdesigns.com. And there are free gifts to get you started. And if you happen to be a Facebook fan, we do have a private group. Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash SureFit Designs. Request to join. 
Make sure you answer the three questions and I'll approve you. Thanks so much for watching.